Warning! This show may include words and ideas that some people may find offensive. Opinions given in this show are those of the presenters. This may or may not be in line with the values of Roller Snakes. Sorry, not sorry, but really sorry. Or not. Good night, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning. This is the fifth episode of The Brain Drain Show with me, Ford Brookfield, and this is... Toby. And we've got some good shit to talk to you about today. Why do you have to go in so hard with swearing straight away? Because I know it had a nice pat batch. Ah, oh, don't. She is very upset about it. Did tell I t- did I tell you what she said the other day? No. She was she was uh, staying at mine, um, which will there was a reason for that, which will become apparent in. Your mummy had a sleepover. Mummy had a sleepover. Did you cook something in the air fryer? I fuck no, I did, but not what I'm referring to. Anyway, she just what I said to her like we're recording the show next week. Do you want me to give any messages out to the listeners? And she said to tell everyone that I make really good scrambled eggs. So what have you been up can... to since the last episode? What have I been up to since the last episode? Last so episode. Why do you sound the? Something? I don't know. What have I been up to since the last episode? That's Southern American, not Southern English. But I don't mind. Does it? It's all the same. Um, what have you been up to, Ford? So we went filming in Wales and Cardiff, no. Bristol. Oh yeah. With a uh, with Lee Dainton from oh, yeah. Dirty Sanchez. Dirty Sandwich. Dirty Sandwich, yep. Cool. He's shown us a couple of uh, a couple of outtakes that never made it into any Sanchez films. Were they bad? They're fucking... There's one that I'm not going to talk about, but there was a lot of shit. Oh, and it, it was pretty bad. And we did a podcast as well. Uh, Dainton's podcast, The Side Effects of Bullshit. Nice, I, good. I mentioned uh, the Brain Drain Show a couple of times in there. Oh, did you? Yeah. I was going to ask uh, you. No, about I, actually, I actually did. I said me and Toby he doing a podcast. He actually did. I actually did. <laughs> did no. you mention me? And... Yeah. Oh, amazing. Maybe I'll get a couple of followers. But it depends how we cut it up because Dainton's super oh, yeah, autistic, it. isn't he? So it's like quick, quick, quick. Is he autistic or just got ADHD? I think both. Okay. But do you remember his old videos? The they used whammy. to be. They used to be cut like yeah. trick, running, trick, run, trick. But that was good. Uh, we got a load of stuff there, very productive. And then the weekend just gone, I was out with uh, Will and Tommy G. We went to Nottingham. Will did a really good trick on a on a mani pad, but as he came away fakie, he like rolled. And you know when you lean in too far, heavy backside, and you're like kind of pivoting round, and then tic tac to counteract your balance and completely just ruin the trick. That's true. And what what's your take on? If someone does a really good trick, but on the roll away, they tic tac slightly. Do you, do you get away with it, or I guess it de- no? Does it no. does it depend? No, it doesn't. Count. If you've got a week until the video is out, and then it's your last session, depends what the trick is, doesn't it? I mean, it was it, it was a really good trick, and he just rolled away and slightly tic tac, and he obviously said that it doesn't count, and he doesn't want to take it. Like, yeah, he did it multiple times, but it was quite literally a case of like. The first couple, nowhere near it. And then he'd like land on it and fall off. Then he'd land on it and step off. Then he landed on it and tic tac But by the time he landed on it and tic tac he was like, oh, I've got three more in me. And it's like, you're that close already. Yeah. Right. Just just keep going. But it was in Nottingham near the Market Square. So we kind of like fucked off to do a, to film kind of a few Can I more. guess what trick it was? Yeah. Was it um, Frontside Pop Shop at Nose Man in Ollie Big Out? No, but that would be good though. I didn't even. Think I saw of him that. doing the front side pop shove it. Can you tell me what it is? But blow it out so you can't hear what you're saying. It was. Do you know what it was? Half cab. Of course, I know what it was. Half I was cab- there filming. Um, it was a. Uh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. No, it's got to be and, good. It's got to be and when great. he was di- when he did it, it was like this, and he like he like yeah. tapped. Yeah, um, can't do that. So yeah, filming with Will. And Tommy G in Nottingham. It was one of those days where everyone was just like close <coughs> to a trick. And there was like one or two tricks landed, but I kind of had the feeling Will did a really good line at a spot. And he used a bit of the spot that I think I've only seen Gouch use. Because people, you know, the spot in Nottingham with a bank with the metal strips on it. Yeah. There's also the side to it. If you've got the bank here, you've also got yeah, the bank the there with slabs yeah. missing and rails over. Like yeah. he did a trick on the bank then over the rails. Oh, nice. But I kind of feel like his heart was set on the, the trick at the mani pad. And have you ever had one of those days where it's kind of 
you're filming and everyone, because everyone gets close to a trick but doesn't land it, you go to the next spot and you kind of have a feeling that everyone's kind of over it because they were, they were all so close to the original trick they wanted to get. So you kind of feel like you're just filling in the, the time because you're already there. Yeah, yeah. Not saying Will's trick was filling in the time because it was good, but I know that he wanted the, the trick at the mani pad. So my weekend was full of uh, full of depression and sadness because my friends didn't get the tricks. But the weekend before that with Dainton, big dirty Sanchez fan, Sanchez. Well, you can't have everything. <clears throat> a famous person once said that, a famous poet called Jagger. I think you can't always get what you want. Prick. Why don't you tell me about your weekend or what you've been doing since the... Uh... Well, first of all, can I just mention, there's a couple of things I need to talk about. Air Fryer Gate. Ninja Kitchen UK as of the date today, which is the 10th of May. We've still not heard if you're going to sort us out. They did get back to us, though. Yeah, they did come back to us, but they're being a bit flaky now. So I might have to cancel <sighs> Typical. my uh, subscription to uh, Ninja Kitchen UK. No, you can't do that. You've got to... The thing with your generation is you want everything really <laughs> quickly. Gun. You want everything really quickly. Perseverance, Toby. Fucking hell. Perseverance. From your generation. Perseverance. Perseverance. Don't know the bloody meaning of it, do they? Perseverance. Don't know the meaning. I've done a million full-length videos. I know what it means to stand and wait. Right. <clears throat> this is the penultimate episode of season one. What's your... Uh, give me five words to sum up the season so far, Ford. Don't think. Go. One. Funny. Annoying. Angry. Factual. Fraser, did you watch the last episode? Did you, did you, no, did he's you see, only, he's watched it once live. Did you, you see the edited version? <clears throat> I don't think anyone did. There's a bit where I say we're being ho held at gunpoint and I've edited Toby like in a hood with a gun. That, that got a lot of, a lot of shits and giggles, a yep. lot of happy fun times. Do you think you're going to cry on an episode of this show at all? Because I think that'd be really good for everyone. It depends what guests we <clears> get on. <throat> if I'm like, well, if, if I'm just over yeah. the moon with excitement. Oh, fun one. I think if Bam came on the episode, I think we'd hate it. Yeah, I don't want think... Bam on. Fuck no. But um, interesting. That guy sounds like a fucking mess. Have you seen what's been going on with him on Instagram? He's, what's he's, going on? He's living in a um, a robe and a pair of vans and one of the vans is missing a shoelace. He's and he's still not like... mental. But anyway. Oh, um, Hope he gets in some help. Clown Skateboards wants to guest on one of the shows. What, the clown from Clown The Sables. clown, the actual clown. Banksy? Yeah. Banksy's coming on. Is that right, producer? Banksy wants to Banksy? Come on. Is Banksy coming on? Well, it's not Banksy that runs clown, is it? But, but he's on the board. It would be funny, though, wouldn't it, if he did? What, Banksy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah no one knew. But anyway, <coughs> so your weekend has consisted of sleepover with mummy. <laughs> yeah, my mum's been in town because... Uh, oh, can I just say something quite funny, actually? You know probably what won't come across in the last episode but um it was kind of a, a tense vibe in the record last episode um and uh it was quite a full-on day and i went home and i do the usual thing that i do if the weather's good i go and stand at the end of the garden and just catch up on a bit of steering one <laughs> goes that just imagine <laughs> well you wait. know that pablo escobar meme where he's just yeah. like okay we'll get this so a few days after rain said to me it just came up in conversation that you were being a dick or something and I said, and she was like, yeah, I knew something had happened because I looked out the bedroom window and you were staring at a fence. And what was, is she on about? You do that shit anyway. I know, but I obviously it was there for some time staring at a fence, <clears throat> which was quite funny. Um, I, um, I went to a one-year-old's birthday party. They had a mini ramp in their garden. Nice one, Rain. That was quite interesting. Um, Did you skate the mini ramp? Uh, me and Rex had a little role. Well, Rex did more, more than me. Was, and you were just stood staring at a fence. Yeah, there's a lot of babies there and that. And kept you, you, you overhear it quite a lot with babies. Um, people like hold them and they're like, "Oh, I love the smell of babies." Um, you're so cute. I could eat them. Things like that, like eating babies. You hear that a lot. I guess you've not really. Have you got not any no. They say that. They're like, oh, you're so cute. I could eat you. I've got like, a couple of mates that have kids, but I've never I heard... hear it quite a lot. I don't know what it is. Like, a lot of people used to say it to Rex, but I mean, cannibalism is illegal, right? It depends on uh, what country. All oh, right, okay. So maybe that's me. I mean, in the UK, yes, I think it is illegal. Mm, but you hear a lot of that, which is quite worrying. You know if you eat a scab off your leg, <laughs> is that self-inflicted cannibalism? I don't know. Just put it out there. Is eating your own scabs? Uh, 
Self- Auto cannibalism. Self inflicted cannibalism. Let us know. Auto the number is 07383 375 159. Let us know if you've ever participated in cannibalism. <clears throat> no judgment. Remember, leave it as anonymous. It can be anonymous. That's, that's a really good uh, phone in we should actually get. Anyone who's uh, actually admits to being a cannibal, let's get them on the phone. Oh, got approved for my uh, Esther today, which is nice, which is very easy. You got what? Approved for my Esther. What's that? It's when you go to America and you're on a short term oh, stay. Right, okay. Otherwise, you get a visa for anything a year over, but an Esther, I think, gives you up to six months. Yeah. What else did you get up to last week? Um, we went to London for the uh, Adidas Spring 24 wear testing with Cader's new shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, me, Tim, and Ben Plum. Yeah. Have uh, you got any videos of Tim? Yeah, yeah, there's some stuff. Mayte was there. It's good to see her. Nice. Ben Plum was killing it. You ran into Blondie. Is Blondie it? was there, he's, yeah. Hung he's out with lovely. Blondie. I think he's yeah, lovely. Yeah, nice dude. I mean, yeah, he humoured me. Um, and uh, basically looked after Tim because he got a little bit drunk. But Who Blondie looked after <clears> Tim? <throat> no, I did. Imagine Blondie like, oh, Tim, you absolute plonker. He's very well-spoken, Blondie. Nice guy. There was a lot of Palace guys there. A lot of bigger boys. So I did the usual thing and just hid, hid away. What bigger boys were there? Chewy Cannon. Um, Chewy's Ben's, really nice. Fair facts. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh God, here we go. Uh, special guest in the studio. This is our special guest of the week, which I didn't know about until oh. until right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, okay. there's Red Bull everywhere. There's, 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 there's Red Bull everywhere. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> fucking hell. There's a red. There's a red take, a seat. take a seat, Crow Man. There's Red Bull everywhere. I just perched in here. Uh, this is a message from. Uh, hang on, let me put this down. What am I doing? Just Crow Man. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, there's a little note. It's just there's a little note here. It, it says, says uh, I, love I love Mia. Mia. Also, also love. Also love Daryl Nobbs. Yeah, Mia on the cover there. Crow Nobbs. <laughs> Crown Okay, uh, and uh, leave that alone, please. Crown <laughs> Red- here to announce this week's sponsor, which is Fraser. Why is he crawling? Right, why is Toby? What the fuck is going on? <coughs> right, th- this week's show sponsor is Heathen Skateboards. You can win beanie hats, socks, t-shirts, hoodies, and even better, you can win one of these limited edition. Heathen Skateboards, custom-made Slimkowski decks. If you don't win it, I feel sorry for you, but they are available at Roller Snakes and through OG Distribution. Do not miss out. We will give you all of the instructions on how to win this very soon. And now to the Crow Man. Oh, you're getting middle-fingered by the Crow Man. Leave comments on any video that we ask you to leave comments on. We'll let you know how you can win this, and we'll announce it in the next episode. So, I think it's time for Crowman to disappear. So, in three, two, one, let's say goodbye to Crowman. Oh, okay, right. So, Toby is back in the room. Back in the room. Thanks, Crowman. Yeah. Causing you, fucking carnage. Yeah, there's Red Bull all over. We technically have an endorsement from Red Bull now. Oh yeah, the Bantz book. Oh, just the, this episode's what? gone down the pan. <laughs> he, he wetted the Bantz book. What are right. you vaping lately? What's going on? Crystal this, bar. This this is a crystal bar gummy bear. Uh, I would love a sponsorship from Crystal Bar and Ninja Air Fryers. So if you can please email. Look, okay, crystal we need bar. to get this straight. It's not just Ninja Air Fryers. They make lots of things. They do lots of different kind of cooking stuff and they I mean they do outdoor pizza ovens. Well you know they how do fucking indoor pizza ovens. You know what they you know Fra- what? producer Fraser wants an indoor pizza oven in the UK. Um if 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 they don't come back to us, I'm gonna be upset. You know what the easiest way you know the easiest way for me to get this drilled in my head that it's Ninja Air Fryers the Extremo Pluso is if I've got one in front of me. So Ninja this is your second warning. The fans need air fryer updates Toby can give air fryer updates, but I can't because I don't have an air fryer I update did, um, thing from kitchen utensils and plug, butt plugs. Yep. Um, I had a really good tip about something you can do with air fryers. I've got a really good Apparently, tip. Apparently, um, you know, churros? Is it churros? The donut you Churros. <coughs> churros. You know churros you get from Aldi, Ch- apparently. Churros. Churros. Yep. Get those, stick them in the air fryer. 
and then it reheats them and makes them taste like they've just come out of the fryer. Oh, that's what we need. Imagine. Get some churros in. Producer, can you, uh, you know, do you know what else I think if once we get Ninja sorted, I need a new Hoover and I quite fancy a Shark Hoover. That'll be yeah. the next one. But after that. Don't, I, they make the, don't they make them as well? Same okay, company. well, we got an in there. Well, well that's well easy, though, because <coughs> they can send it all in one <coughs> shipment. But imagine I on one need of it. the future episodes, we have a Ninja Air Fryer right here, and we're like, right, I need a lunch break, and then we'll just go, we need a Ninja Air Fryer. You awesome. can put in your chicken nuggets, you can put your dick in, you can have deep fried sausage. Um, I saw a toaster the other day that has a touchscreen on the side, and you can select how. Technology's going too what far. What is your toasting, and what colour you want it to come out so you can adjust your the cooking time so it asks what you what you're toasting yeah so you know no but it could be like bagels oh yeah or like i don't know like a crumpet or something and you you slide select it and then you adjust the the how well done you want it anyway that's really cool anyway this is fucking was, riveting <coughs> stuff fucking riveting stuff what i was getting on to is that out of all the big corporate companies <clears throat> one of them which i think is quite prominent and likes to have a bit of a, a laugh is Audi. A L D I. Not Audi the cars, A U D I. Audi the supermarket. I think we should start hitting up Audi as well. Try and get a um what's the knockoff Twix is called from Audi? You've had them. Jive. <laughs> Let's get some Jive bars in. Jive bars. Imagine if one day you just get a an enormous shipment from Audi and it's just of jive bars. a year's supply of jive bars oh, um, but God. what I would like from Audi is if we could go to our local shop you know when they do the the the, the aisle down the middle all the new shit special buys just the random <coughs> shit they let us in at midnight and we can go fucking nuts on the yeah, special buys and, we, and Fraser can film it and <laughs> yeah. we can put it in and an episode and that is some serious content anyway Audi we're coming for you after Ninja Ninja Kitchen come through with some good and after Crystal Elf bars Right, let's move on. We've got some Shall videos. Shall we actually start the show? Yeah, we probably should. Fucking okay. hell, this has been this is an ordeal, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Right, let's We've been recording for over an hour. Let's start the actual <clears throat> show. Been invaded by Crowman. I've been invaded by you. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Let's let's look at some videos. Actually, before we do that, Ford. Are you having a stroke? Please don't. Can you tell people that, can you, you can't have a stroke on camera? <laughs> Can you tell people where to send their voice notes and send, DMs and etc.? Send your voice notes, DMs, questions, kooks of the week, crowman questions, Tom Penny stories, air fryer updates, and if you think we should be allowed, a ninja air fryer to 07 383 375 159. I have nearly got that number mesmerized. <laughs> right. Look look at me. I'm going to see if, Have you got the number in front of you, Fraser? <laughs> He's almost got it mesmerised. Is that what I said? Mesmerised, not memorised. <coughs> You're mesmerising. Right, see if I can say the number without looking at it. 07 383 375 159. Well done, after all this, these hours saying it. Right, let's start the show. So this week's show sponsor, as you guessed, is Heathen Skateboards. We don't need to go into it because you've just seen the fucking ordeal that just went on. To- <sighs> So we're going into the video chat. Toby, Animation. What, what are we going into? Animation, video chat. Video chat. So, <clears throat> first part we're going to look at is uh, Griffin Gas. So Griffin Gas, Orca card part. For Spitfire. For Spitty Fires. They're bringing out a couple of parts at the moment, aren't they? Which Spitfire would hook us up? Fucking the wheels are so expensive, but I love them. Yeah, £60 for a set of wheels. Well... Did I tell you about OJ's and all the new power? Of, of, did I, was it you I was telling about that? Some of the new power and OJ wheels are 75 quid plus. Who's going to spend 75 quid when Spitfire is legitimately the best wheel brand? Mm, but these ones, are the new technology and stuff. Yeah, anyway, but they say that every drop. Okay. Griffin Gas is rad. Here we go, Griffin Gas. Is this a 4x3? Is this 4x3 It's, a, it's a VX1 thing, isn't it? Well, look at that. It doesn't it look like manual. a VX1. Right, we need to review the skating because... Callum from Get Leicester said, can you make sure Ford reviews the skating and not the cameras? But I get off more on the cameras that they use. He gets off on the cameras they use. Yeah, I you physically get, get off on the cameras that they use. So. Um, why didn't you ask me to say anything about it? Does he not care what I say? Probably not, no. Okay, good. Probably not. Backside tail slide round the corner to backside flip out was very good. Oh, lunch job. There's very, there's very few um, big 
pros that I follow on Instagram, but I follow Griffin Gas because I think he's sick. Um, I don't know. Do I follow him? I'm not too sure. I kind of get lost with who I follow because it says I follow like a thousand twenty people, but I'm sure I only see about ten people's posts. Yeah, but that's just the algorithms, isn't it? It's ridiculous. So that is not VX. That's hen- <coughs> maybe they've done like a Lakai where the second angles are HD. But um, let's jump into this. Lovely front side heel flip down. And that's that's that wasn't says, him, is it? That's someone else. No, who is it? No, but front side heel flip is an unusual one. You don't often yeah, see Yeah, look, that. there's a mixture of uh, HD and SD here. Yeah. Right, let's get into this. So the part is just side. That is just an intro. Oh, nolly varial flip. Unusual. That's a rare one, isn't it? So it's not even started? Nope. Yeah, right, I can. Here we go. Uh, nolly flip crooks. <coughs> The, the thing is, I, I mean, I don't give a fuck what Callum says. I'm going to talk about it. The VX does look good, doesn't it? With with, But the quality does look shit. Yeah, absolutely. Like, now you're prone and you're used to watching HD. Oh, look at that. Oh, two tricks on the same spot. And he one-upped himself. Oh, damaging a spot there. Vandalism. Yeah, we're not a fan of vandalism. Vandalism is never cool unless it's against a corporation. But even then, it's never cool. Nice. Was that switch? That was switch. This was switch. That was switch. Oh, he's squeezing it in here, isn't he? That's what she said. It's not the only thing he's squeezing. <coughs> oh, lovely little lolly one foot there. What's your take? Oh, that was the end of the line. Well, that was a bit of a deadline. What's then. my what? What's your take on people calling Ollie one foot Solly Norths? Well, they're not called Ollie Norths. They're called one footed Ollies. Yeah. So. One footed out. ollies because that implies that you're doing an ollie with a one foot as opposed to doing an ollie one foot. It's called a one footed ollie. I think, no, it's an ollie one foot. I think you're wrong Jesus on that. Jesus Christ. Is it a one footed ollie or an ollie one foot? Think about, think about it logically and put it in order. I think it's an ollie one foot, not a one footed ollie. That makes no sense to me. So Don't agree with him. How long have you been skating? Like 20 years. Oh, he's going back in switch. Switch backside flip down. I couldn't even tell how big that stair set was because it's just caught big fish. Filming's just fucking. Wait, I'm confused. Is he regular or is he goofy? There's other people in the part. For fuck's sake, this is the thing when people don't put names in vi- standalone video section. I'm, I'll call it a video section because it's not a part of anything, is it? When there's guests, I think this is this is part of a, a longer video thing. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, Griffin, I uh, I apologise. Yeah, if he, if he's got guest clips in it, then I need to know the names of who some of the guests are, because I think unless you follow them, to see a that's tea, um, what's his name, Bannerat, isn't it? Simon. Yeah. Yeah, he's Steez. Simon Bannerat is Steez. Look. Oh, oh, yeah, oh cool. two it's early cool. grabs like in the that. same video pot. A current pro having an, a line with two early grabs in. That is fucking unheard of. I've seen that Good. spot on another video recently. Someone tray flips it. It might be in the new guy that's pro for girl. Well, we There's another. That. We've There's... Got that on here. Have we got that on here? Yes. That's going to be we'll interesting. Come to that. Anyway, Griffin Gas is sick. He's got a good style and he's got a good trick selection. And uh, curb tricks. I do love a good, good luck trick. to him in his career. That's what I say. Look how bad the VX1 is in low light. So yeah, that's still in the daytime, but it's still grainy as fuck. Yeah, but it's not. That's not even half as bad as that Panasonic thing. I have. HC. I've awful. been looking at the Panasonic. I think it's the UA180. Because I'm oh. thinking of going <coughs> to a 4K camera, but using it four by three, and just getting a good like trying to get an MK1 for it. And just using it for Mark one. Yeah. Mark one. Well, it's MKs. It's Styl- a Mark one. stylized MK one. Yeah, it's a Mark one. Yeah, well, I say MK one, you say one footed Ollie. We can't all be correct, apart from me. So, what do you make of this video part so far? I like it. I just, yeah, the other people, we're not really sure how that falls into it, but I will kind of want it more Griffin gas. I do like. He's the- sick. Look at him. I do like that they have solely felt jean shorts, though. That is a massive fashion faux pas. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? I'm not a massive fan of jean shorts, no. I saw Dan Catchy skating over the finish line on his sponsor skate wearing jean, so- jean shorts and thought of you. Yeah. Whoa, kicky front blunt faking. So, yeah, quick side note. Kicky fronty blunty. Kicky fronty blunty. 
Quick side note, Dan Cachy, 300 miles from Leeds to Barry Islands. Congratulations, that is... He was aiming at 50 miles a day, and I think he did it every day, so that's yeah. pretty fucking wild. So 50 miles a day, that is phenomenal. Yeah, the second to last day, they, they did, did they do 70? More, I think 70, yeah, or something like that, That which is insane. What, so they could just have a little relax yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah they, they, they had a little sleepover in the skate park here at Roller yeah. Snakes. Yeah, props to him. That is a massive accomplishment. And it wasn't even just him that did it. He did it with Rybo and Connor. Yeah. Like, so... That... So Connor's mum died of uh, MND yeah. a few years back, so he wanted to get involved with it as well. Yeah, and Rybo's just a good lad. Like, he yeah. supports all of his mates, so that's fucking really good. Oh, so, Picard, oh, so that was that. So, Any thoughts on that? Filmed by Alex Cooper. I think Alex Cooper did a Ben Koppel part a couple of years ago. Not to be confused with Alice Cooper. No, definitely not Alice Cooper. Right. Uh, great video part. Jean shorts I'm not quite into, but I think I do like jean shorts if they're black. Like black jean shorts. Like Maybe I'm just joining the hype wagon, but black polar jean shorts. Yeah. But if you notice that people wear jean shorts, like crew neck, jean shorts... High kind of top New Balance and a cap that's like at this angle. I think that's I think that's the steez. So we're back. So Toby, what is we this? never went anywhere. What is this next <coughs> part we're watching? So th this next one is the Heated Wheel, who were uh, one of our previous show sponsors. I think it's a little bit of a piss take on the fact that full length <sighs> videos now are now twelve minutes. The older I get. If I shake my head, my brain really hurts, which makes me think my brain is a lot looser than it should be in my head. It's not but the also, only thing that's looser. Also, if I do a 360 kick turn, mm -hmm. any more than that, I'll get dizzy. Yeah, dizzy really quick. <clears throat> anyway. I think this uh, five minute full length is a piss take on yeah. your now 13 to 20 minute full length. And Timmy, Timmy Smith from Form Distribution. It's, it's called Tom. But it's Timmy. Um, Fuck's sake. Tommy Smith. Timmy Form Tommy Smith. Timmy Tommy Smith. Timmy Tommy Smith from Form Disc says that um, a 30 minute is now a full length video. And I still think 40, but I am starting to agree with 30 because as I'm filming this next video, I just don't have the patience anymore. Oh, you're filming a video, are you? But, yep. Yeah, oh, I've got fucking such a good idea for the intro. I'll let you know after the show. It's really good. We're going to get some uh, cinematography in on it. So look forward to that. So five minute full length. Who's in this? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I Tom don't Remillard. Oh, is he? In it? Oh, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Blender's actually in it. Oh, is he? But let's just skip to Blender. No. Because I'm only here for Blender. I'm no, only here for Neil Blender. But he's Hang not... on, we need to do a clean one of that. I'm only here for Neil Blender. I'm only here for Neil Blender. But he's... I'm only here for Neil Blender. He's not really in it, in it. He's in, he's in like a little polarizer section. That's Jack. He was at oh, the... Oh, uh... got a polarizer section. Yeah, there's, there's a little, polar, uh, little polarizer montage in here. It's interesting that it's called Five Minute Full Length because it's actually just under 10. That was lovely. I, is, is again, I don't know who this is, though. But I know oh, they've, yeah. just, they've just turned two people pro, so I probably should know a little bit more. But I just don't know. I'm struggling with yawning here. I keep yawning. I've just had a Red Bull. Why am I yawning? Because it's a sugar-free Red Bull. It's not got the same energy intake. Yeah, it hasn't, but the caffeine intake's the same, your helmet. No, it's not got the same energy intake. Let us know what your favourite flavour of Red Bull is. So no, text I don't DM, give a fuck. No one text cares. Text DM, <laughs> voice note to 07383 375 159. Let us know what you like to drink and put in your throat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I actually said that. That was good. Wally free, front three out. Front three sixes are good. Did we talk yeah. about that in one of the earlier episodes? You said Did... who's got the best yeah, front Jeremy three. Jeremy Ray. Jeremy Ray's got the best front three? Yeah. I actually can't think off the top of my head who's got... The best front three. I actually said Mike Simons last time and you said absolutely not. Absolutely and it made not. Me laugh. Uh, best back three. Gino's got a good, very good back three. But he's probably only ever done one. I think it's in Jason film. Dill's part in Skatemore. I know, he, he did one over a the... kicker over a car. I think, no, it's no. over a kicker over a picnic bench. He back threes that in Jason Dill's part. He does the back part. three in his part in Yeah Right, doesn't he? Yep. And, uh, Tom Remillard. And he also he back threes over the great... Uh, is it Flushing... Meadows, Flushing Queen, something like that. I don't know. It's fucking Not cool. a fucking clue. I love Tom Remillard, uh, Tom Remillard's leg steez, how he like rolls away. Everything's kind of like surfer boy. But um, I met him in Copenhagen and he's one of the only people 
that I was quite intimidated to talk to because he's just so cool and his face is constantly like. Was he a nice man? Yeah. Nice boy. I think a you lot heard of... it here first. Tom Remillard is a nice boy. Guy. I think a lot of uh, pros that you meet are generally quite nice. Who have you ever met a pro or a skateboard that you've looked up to and really wanted to film, and they've not been exactly the nicest to you? Anyone you can think of? I met Luan. You didn't even give me a chance to answer. Let me think about it. Yeah, but you got to talk whilst we're watching the video. You don't have to. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. Because when it comes to editing, it makes it easier for me, the okay. chief in editing. Um, yes, Luan. Yeah. Luan was nice. I asked him to film a clip and he, he didn't want to. But I, uh, So Matt Berger was there and he like flipped front nose this real tall, this real tall ledge in Copenhagen, like some big steps. And I was like, Luan, do you want to film a trick for this uh, edit? And you were just like, and just skated off. So I was like, okay. Maybe he didn't understand you. He he can speak English. He's yeah, American. I know, but I mean, you barely speak English. So maybe he didn't. How is it hard to understand? Hey, Luan, would you like to film a trick for our Copenhagen video? Maybe there was a bus going past or something and he couldn't hear it. There wasn't a bus going past. Maybe, it was he, an maybe he had his headphones in. He didn't have headphones in. Maybe I'm just putting it down. I like, I'm, you know, maybe he's a nice guy. Is this his N? Uh, what's his name? What's this guy's name? Yeah, Enris Falovs. Oh, Emre. Um, yeah, that guy. <laughs> like I don't he, know anyone's names anymore. He's sick as well. What's your the, name? This is coming up to the heat wheel montage. Where's Blender in this? See if you can spot him. Let him know, innit? Because it says Blender's in this. So I'll let's find when, out. I'll can you tell you me when Blender's on here? I've got a um, black... ADHD. I've got um, a series of boards that Blender did the graphics for for Black Label. Oh, nice. Hanging in my. Uh... Where is he? I don't know. That's Blender, I think. But not him. No, not with the long hair. That's not Blender. Yeah, but the one before was regular, and then the one with long hair was goofy. That was a cool little kick. Yeah, push we need there. to learn that. We need to get ours out, don't we? And do that. Like a little kick. You push, push while you're on the wall. Well, maybe the we can learn that if we ever build the extra. Extra con um, concrete quarter. Outside. Yeah, it is happening. So for the first time, I was listening to The Nine Club on Spotify. All right. On Spotify. I've listened to The Nine Club before. But ra at random points halfway through, so I listened to the one with Lintel. And he's like, so Lintel, tell us about your first sponsor. And then out of nowhere, it just goes, The Nine Club is sponsored by Carrie Yuma. It's a new upcoming exciting footwear brand that's doing loads for the environment and i just think do they believe that <laughs> like they clearly don't they no nah, no nah. yeah, but they're paying them that's it like we if karyuma came to you and said you want to be a sponsor for the brain drain show and they said all right we'll give you a thousand dollars a month but all you've got to do is on spotify put a little yeah kind what of what would you say i don't know how much do you want to drop your values do you, do you think people even fucking it, care? This is it. The people the people who care don't matter. Dan Kate's intro part. <laughs> and the people <laughs> no, that matter don't the care. The people that matter... No, the people that mind don't matter and the people that matter don't mind. Yeah. Or some shit like that. And it's that section where he's like, your love, it's keeping me higher. Is it, that's Quadrophenia I part. think it is, yeah, because it was on... I remember the first time I saw that was it. Or is it the song that starts off where it's... I don't know, it was on the, uh, I remember seeing it the first time at the premiere, which was, I think, in Leeds. Because yeah. it, like, comes up as typewriter font, doesn't it? Yeah. What What's the reason behind that? Maybe Kate can explain when he's a guest on the show. Are we having him as a guest Kate's on the show? is not coming on this show. Dan Kate's <laughs> from me. You're not coming on the show. The better show. half of this podcast, you are allowed <laughs> to be on the show. Also, there is no better half. We are both the best half because when two become one, it becomes a better half. Right, on to the next correspondence, please, Toby. <laughs> we're not on the fucking mailbag, you idiot. Yeah, but we're on to the next <laughs> video. So I'm going to press play right now. Three, two. What, what are we watching? I do not fucking know. Rowan this, Davis. This is Rowan Davis. Uh, it's a very um, Krell tap heavy video section today, but that's fine. So Rowan Davis is pro for? Girl. I think it's girl, isn't it? Girl. Let's have a little look. Right, before we get into this. Yeah. Pro for girl part. So, so what is let's this? Let's get to it. This is Rowan Davis, pro for girl skateboards. He was um, the Australian skater of the year, wasn't he? Last year. Uh, 
No fucking idea. Oh, that's what that's remember. what Timmy Tommy Smith. That was wild, Tom. wasn't it? Twitch front nose back two seventy flip. Okay, hell. we're into the mailbag. It's <laughs> 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 a fucking mailbag. We're not. We're still on this video review. Okay, so I didn't watch Fuck. this, but um, a gentleman that I know said that he watched gentleman. it. Gentleman, and he thought that the the long shot filming on this was particularly bad. Okay, I well, did, let's make our own decisions. I did on kind that of breeze over it. I don't <coughs> think there was a lot of bad, um, <coughs> a lot of bad, bad long it's shot. That was bad. a very long kind of intro for this line. That could have been cut. That's probably but, uh, music that works in. Oh, sneaky photographer there. Would love to see that photo. Okay, let's get going. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? Gap front tail. Yeah, he made that look easy. I'm sure it was. His wasn't. screen must be broken on that camera because he's you, he's specifically using the viewfinder. Lovely scratch on the screen there as well. Looks my like his camera's pretty fucked up. My lens is slowly fucking dying. No matter what I do <coughs> with it, I just can't get rid of like the light sections with the surface scratches. I'm gonna have to get it buffered out or something. Just know. smash it. No, I don't want to smash it. It's the fucking. It's the best lens. It's heavy, but it's the best lens. But it's slowly dying. That's nice. I fucking love spots like that. Like it's like that one in Sheffield, isn't just it? utter shit. Mm, maybe not. Okay. That one was that one's tiny, Toby. Similar. Similar. No, it's a bank the, with some steps in the, the middle. The one of in it. Sheffield is absolutely <coughs> hoog. <coughs> it's I'm a fat. bank with some steps in I'm it. Fat. That's I what I meant. It's similar. Slut. What? Nothing. Did you call me a slut? I said cough out that seam and you slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. God. Lovely tray flip on flat. That was some... fucking hell. I don't think the long shots particularly bad it's quite close it's fast isn't it it's all yeah. of this I, one thing i did hill. notice about this part is a lot of the long shot they are following they are tracking rolling. as they do it so yeah. who is it who is one of the main filmers who started using the rolling tracking long shots i thought a lot of the rolling tracking long shots were kind of in the zero videos like jamie thomas did a lot of it in zero videos like incorrect it was dan wolf Okay, it was Dan Wolf apparently. I didn't say that Eastern James Exposure. Thomas was the first. <coughs> well, that's why I asked you. I guess because in Eastern Exposure... That's like you when you throw your toys out of the pram, kicking everything Eastern over. Exposure 3 does it a lot with uh, Ricky Oyola yep. going down the street. And who else? Probably... His name, the guy who rode for Element. Big tall guy with blonde hair. Can only really high. Donny Barley? No. He's a big tall guy with blonde hair. Donny Barley is like medium-sized guy with dark hair. No, he had light hair. Danny Barley getting gnarly. Can't remember the guy's name. On the he next wrote ep- for uh, Element. Fuck, I'm, that's gonna bug me. Hang on, I'm gonna find out. <coughs> Reese Forbes. Oh, you should have just said. What well, didn't? Okay, yeah. So I don't, I can't remember what I was referring to at that point. Um, a part that we should video review was Reece no Forbes. the the rolling stuff at Pulaski Plaza. That's one of the first times you saw that tracking long shot with Dan Wolf filming Reese Forbes. And he, I think he does, he just does some flat ground stuff and maybe mm. something over a bin. I can't remember. But we can put that line up. It's quite a prominent black and white. Yeah. Let's just review those two parts yeah, on the next episode. No, let's do that. As, we're going to do that as a separate as after a, hours podcast okay. where we get, pick an old video and we talk about it yep. and go in depth. Okay. Okay. So let's carry get back on. To the video Rowan through. Davis. We here we go. Track a little bit here. here we go. Here we go. So one thing I've noticed about this part is because it's quite fast paced and enjoyable, we're already what nearly four minutes into it, and it it's gone fairly quick. The stairs is tiny. So is that spot so thin? Is that spot going to be like the new hot shit? You're going to see that in a bunch of videos. I wonder where it's located. There's a double set in Hitchin in Hertfordshire in a school that's not as thin as that, but it's very thin and it's very high and steep, and not much has been done down it. But it's a good set of stairs that needs to be. What, what size are the steps? Uh, I think it's like a four flat four, but it's very high. They're really sharp and it's down like a brick wall, bushes on the side and it's very thin. Can you send me a photo <laughs> or a link to that if possible? Um, Google that sounds something that Rashid might like. Yeah, he would love it. Yeah? Okay. Well, it's let's in check Hitchin. it out. It's in Hitchin, Hertfordshire. So um, that was... there we go. So Rowan Davis is pro for girl. Well done. That is, I can see he's, why he's, he's pro. He's yeah, very can, deserving yeah, of definitely, being pro. I like that. Let us know what you thought to that video part. Send in your voice notes, DMs, kooks of the weeks and suggestions to 07383375159. I've got that number fucking mesmerised now. I didn't even look at that. I was staring right at the camera, mesmerized. not at the number. So right. that was three video parts, five minute full length for Ron Davis and Griffin Gas. Do you know what it's time for now? Stinker of the week. This week's stinker of the week is Tory Pudwell. Absolutely stinking. 
so I was having this conversation the other day. Someone actually said HD filming currently, you know how it's very prominent on the feet, is a very, it's a bonus for Tory Pudwell because it cuts out his arms. Now, just to, um, yeah, no, the guy is obviously very, very good and he's probably a nice dude, but stinking. Sorry, mate. Right. Anyway, on to the mailbag. Animation, please. We're into the mailbag. Okay, so do you want to start this mailbag? Okay, yeah, right, here we go. First one here is uh, Alan from Bogner. Is that Bogner Regis? Hi, big fan of the show. What Thank are your you. opinions on brands not selling into all shops and being funny about who can sell what? So we've actually got a good one with that, haven't we, with FA and hockey? Yeah, apparently we're not a skate shop. So, so we're not allowed it. Um, can, you know, can, can, you... can I just give you my, like, this is my... This is your two cents. This is, this is my... Uh, take on this as a buyer because that is primarily what my job do. role yep. I don't want it Like I'm, I don't care if they don't want to be in, if they uh, if they're not going to fuck with us I don't want to fuck with them you're not going to beg for it no I don't care no but if they come to me and say do you want hockey I'm, I'm not even bothered no I'm alright we've done alright without it so get fucked moving on well there you go I'm I, just not like I, I, those brands are rad obviously right? and rad, Jason Dill's sick right and all the and teams are even, amazing yep. but if you're not into it that's fine go go elsewhere you know sell yeah. to what's the name shop down the road that went out of business after six months or whatever it was you know like if you want to deal with that deal with that I can't that's fine. who it was but, but if you want a shop that's going to pay your bills and order regularly and do it properly and you know then there you go anyway that's my what's your opinion um I think they're well within their, they're well within their rights to yeah, decide that. who they yeah. want to what they want to be in. But you also have active skate shops that want to support. Imagine you own that brand and you've got five hundred skate shops you won't sell to that are reaching their hands out to say we like your stuff, we want to sell it. Like you said, when the time comes to where you want to sell it, you you're more prone to being like you didn't give us time before. Yeah. So. And do you think they would eventually reach out to these 500 shops that they don't sell to? Not just FA and hockey. There's other brands that do it. Eventually, they're going to reach out to these 500 shops because they financially need a little bit more gain. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, 80% of those shops are going to say, well, we're actually doing quite well selling what we're selling. We don't need your shit. Yeah. That could eventually... Bite them in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I don't care, really. Like, if you don't want to deal with certain... <laughs> Shops and whatever, sure thing. Fuck right. it. Who yeah, cares? fuck it. Um, Go buy it from a skate shop that has it if you want to. Yeah, you wanna exactly. Represent it. Anyway, this is actually sort of leading on from that one. Uh, Marion from Manchester. What's going on? Going on with board prices lately? It's crazy. Discuss. Discussing capital letters. So you again, being a buyer, you know more. But all I know from this is it's um, increase in import charges and increase in wood shops and the price of wood and obviously we get a lot of people come in saying we had a kid yesterday and it was a completely valid question just a young kid he said why is this board 45 and this board's 90 so i had to you know explain uk we can just get it right on our doorstep european and america we have to ship it and import well from europe we still have to import it but if you're getting something from america it yeah. has to sit on a container for six months to keep the price down so you know for example, Slugger, yeah. if they're ordering a season of Baker to keep the price down, you get it sent on a massive shipping container and yeah. it can take months. Same as Nick, Nick Zorlak. Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't to take keep six price months, down, though, does it? To keep price down, well, Nick's, Nick Zorlak's stuff once got stuck yeah. import for nearly a year. Fuck. Um, but I think <clears> that was through COVID and stuff. But I do know it yeah. can take months. So... You know it's, a bit more in detail, so you go. Yeah, it's been a bit of a funny situation. Obviously, during COVID, the demand for skate stuff went through the roof and mm -hmm. everyone lost their shit about it. Um, so the factories went into overdrive trying to match uh, demand. Um, and then obviously with Brexit, import duties and stuff changed and there was, yep. you know, things like that. But, you know, the price of containers, shipping a container of, for example, decks to the UK has come down a lot. Oh, it's came back down It's now. come down a lot, but the prices have gone up. Why so, do you think that is? I don't know. I mean, look, it's not for me. Is it to, wood shops, do you think? I think the wood shops, the, you know, the raw materials have gone up as well. I know that... You know, demand for stuff has gone up, and, that, you know, demand pushes prices up. And then on the back end of that, then you know, 
a lot of wood shops can't keep up and they've shut down. Yeah, like exactly. we've lost a couple of wood shops in the UK. Yeah, making making getting wood to make boards etc. more harder within the UK. So you have to import them. I think there's there's always going to be cheaper board brands out there. Yep. Um, I think we're in a, a market now where people like something specific and they'll pay the money for that. Like I'm always going to buy bareback boards. You love bareback as well. Just the wood that comes, <laughs> the wood that comes from bareback. Fuck's sake, generator, generator wood yep. bareback. It's good, you know, and you can get that. You know, you can pay eighty to a hundred quid for a deluxe board, which essentially is the same wood that comes into the country, and you can buy a heroin board at sixty quid. Yep. Probably shouldn't say whether everyone knows this stuff, don't they? Well, they've all got stickers on. Yeah, them. everyone you knows it comes from BBS. You can though. literally look up BBS wood shop. And, it will and see who you. comes from there. So do, a massive, basically, do your research. There's like a you massive can get slap stuff. forum. <clears throat> yeah, about people know wood, about it. Current wood shops in 2023. Where you, you know, what board you're skating, what wood you're skating. So yeah. there you go to answer your question. It's all because of the price and inflation of wood. Okay, do you want to say next one there, Danny from Shepparton Mallet? Danny from Shepparton Mallet. Why do people call it a full cab <clears> when it's <throat> just a cab? If it wasn't the full 360, it would just be a half cab. Yeah, absolutely. Why are people wasting? I mean, we talked about this in the first or wasting second episode. Words. What was it? Blunt. Stop uh, wasting blunt to your fakey. Blunt to fakey. It's, it's a blunt. blunt. If yeah. it's anything else, you're going to say it's a backside blunt or a front blunt or a blunt flip out. It's not a blunt to fakey. It's a blunt. Same with this. Does that also? <coughs> so we spoke about a blunt to fakey being on a ramp, but if you're blunt sliding a ledge, yeah, you are more prone to say. Bl- I hear people say blunt slide to regular or blunt slide to fakey, but I would naturally say. Just blunt the ledge. You don't need to say blunt slide to regular. If you're coming out regularly, it's un- it's, you're not going to come out like <clears throat> a blunt here slide. We here we go. Look, a blunt slide on a ledge, right? If it's a backside blunt slide and you pop out forward, it's a backside blunt slide on a ledge. That's if it's that, front side, it's front side. I if just tell out someone f- to blunt the ledge. <clears throat> no, uh, blunt uh, slide it. Yeah, yeah, but I'd imagine that they already know to come out regular. Yeah, you, le- if you're coming out fakey, it's a blunt slide to fakey. This yeah. one. Why do people call it a full cab when it's just a cab? I don't know, because they're fucking idiots. It's a cab. A cab If it's half cab, it's half cab. Simple. Someone's Move on. let Toby out the cage. There you go. <clears throat> Andy from Shropshire. Big up Andy from Shropshire. Here we go. I'm a big fan of Ford. Fucking Spelt too. my name right correctly. Oh, well done, Andy. Can fucking you ask him what was his first tattoo? I'm now ready to start copying all of his tattoos, and I want to do it in chronological <laughs> order. <laughs> Right, so for anyone who didn't see the first episode, was it the first episode that... Andy's been with us since the first... Day he, one. He sent, an, he sent a question in every single episode. So you, it's a bit of background on Andy. I think we should send him, if we get Brain Drain t-shirts made, we need to... Andy's been a regular on the show and he's helped contribute. If anything, to be honest, without Andy, this show probably wouldn't fucking exist. So Andy from Shropshire says that he's been saving up in, in his money to get all the tattoos done like Ford... But he's been drawing them on in the meantime. So it looks like now he's moved on. What was your first tattoo? Because he wants to make... My first tattoo <laughs> was the heart with the eye. Very emo. Too, huh? Very My Chemical Romance. And the all-seeing eye in the pyramid with the Joy Division Unknown Pleasures in the background because it's an album that everyone should own and you should know your history on Joy Division because they're great. I'm just, pu- I'm just pointing it out there. If Andy from Shropshire gets this baghead tattoo... That baghead tattoo in the cross, the classic cross, that's what the original baghead crew, <clears throat> bar one or two people, have actually got. If he gets one of those, give I'm, him a pro board. I'm going to fucking, <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm bigging this up, but I'm going to send him a bunch of stickers, a t shirt, and any boards if I've got any left, if he gets one. Okay, now, so I'm not saying he needs to get one. Should we offer that out to anyone who gets a Baghead Crew tattoo from now on? And they have to prove that it's not done any earlier than today's date, which, which is, is the, the 10th, 10th of May, 2023. There's a guy in Manchester, fucking lovely guy, does a lot of skating, supports a lot of people. Uh, his does name? his own brand called Bruno. He's a, he's a great guy. I've met him, uh, met him a couple of times. I love skating with him. He's a positive dude. He's got my full name tattooed on his arm. And under that, he's got Chris Pullman. Wow. That is the most dedicated shit I've ever seen. Once again, 
Ford proves he has some diehard fans. That, but that's Andy and Bruno. That's wild. <clears throat> yeah, big up Andy and Bruno. Big up Andy from Shropshire, and big up Bruno who does pre-safe. Check him out. Support his brand. He supports all of his mates, and you get gets your name tattooed on him. So, go wanna, figure. Next one. Mark from Cheadle Hume has got some Mark strong Mark from words. Cheadle Hume. Air fries are amazing, and anyone who doubts them needs to shut the fuck up and eat a dick. Strong words, but we true. don't. That's not really a question. That's just a big statement. But here we go. This Jack- is Jack from Congleton, not Chongleton. There was a spelling error on the screen. Um, Toby, this one's for you. What trucks you both ride? Can you say what's up to my hamster Harry? I'll start with. I've been on funders for decades. Years. No. Probably 25 plus years. Are you uh, sure? Because on the last episode, I think you said, I've been riding funders for 15 years. It's more than that. Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe no, a homie not long, is tripping. <clears throat> longer than that. But recently, the very kind people at Rock Solid, Wes and Leo, sent me some uh, Ace Hollows. Mm-hmm. I've been on those guys, and I like it. Just a little bit of adapting, a little bit of a change. Turning circles a bit steeper. Any but issues? Nothing. Locking, clicking, no, base no. plate slipping. Nothing at all. All good. Base plate slipping. What do you mean? What, because you've not done your bolts up properly? The, we just had someone in the other day saying that their, um, their kingpin and their base, pe- uh, their base plate keeps slipping. I don't know what they meant, but the king... Well, I've, obviously I've, they have no idea what they're I've talking know, about. I've known that ace kingpins can sometimes rattle loose or the bolt can come off, but... That's because people are riding their trucks far too loose. Do trucks up a little bit and you'll just be able to land tricks. Um, what trucks are you riding? One set of 215 independents. Yeah. Pretending to fall asleep, are you, No, Toby? I'm just really tired. I, I need another... I'm going to open another room. Why don't you get a full fat Red Bull? <laughs> Two Red Bulls Ugh. in one show. You can tell it's been a bit... I was up a lot last night. Um, just Also, can I just, yeah, just interrupt was. this? Um, for the people asking how I've been sleeping, a little bit better. Thanks. So, I'm currently on some 215s on a Lee Ralph vision board. They're lovely. They're not beyond loose. They are. They are loose, but they're not beyond loose. And on my filming board, they're I've fucking got some, loose. They're ridiculously loose. I've got loose. some Indy One Six Nine. Now, for a long time, <laughs> Indy One Six Nine was my truck of choice. Just non-stop. That size, nine-inch boards, especially the Zara shape with some One Six Nines. Yeah, fucking lovely. Uh, so, to answer the question, short, independent, and Toby is currently on Ace, but he's rode Thunder for thirty-five years. So, this is Mike from Nottingham. Does BDM stand for Brown Dickies Man? I think that's reference the last episode where you, we were talking you about said, you know BD. No, we were talking about BDF, yeah. Billy Dick Fingers, and then you said BDM. Didn't know what BDM was. And it was, was BDSM. Um, does it stand for Brown Dickies Man? No. Um, I I <coughs> missed that era of. It seemed like there was a massive spike in skateboarders all wearing brown trousers. Like brown trousers was the in thing. Brown really Dickies you... specifically was like covers up the stains. The in thing. The shit stains. No, I didn't say shit stains, but stains. Well, what other stains is a set of brown trousers going to cover up? Jizz. Anyway, next one. Annika from where? Have you ever been to where? Where is she from? <laughs> She's from where? Where? Where in Hertfordshire. Uh, two pro skaters that came out of where? Can you name them? Dave Allen and Dan Cates. Funny enough, both lived next door to each other at some point. Because Dave used to give Kate stickers when he was on Santa Cruz. And oh, both, interesting. Yeah, a bit I of... I never uh, knew that. Uh, Annika from where? What's going on with Ford's outfits? Hat in last ep was Cray Cray. <laughs> well... Oh, it was. That was a good hat. Well, good I'm hat. trying to every episode wear a different hat, so it makes it a little bit more... Splits yeah. it up a little bit more in a different baghead t-shirt every, every episode, just yeah. so it splits it up a little bit. Okay. But, uh, yeah... No, I mean, I just have a, a bucket full of hats, so I'm going to try and keep making, keep changing my hat game. Bucket full of hats. We had a good conversation this morning, just off on a tangent about why ghosts are such fucking flakes. If you're a ghost, why have you got to wait till it's dark to come out and scare people? Come out, if you're a ghost, I'd be out there all the time fucking with people. Yeah. I'd be like pulling away people's chairs. I'd be dripping water on their head. I'd be hiding their keys and phones. I'd be fucking mm. around nonstop. Ghosts need to man the fuck up. Anyway, back into this. Josh from Manchester. Are you allowed to say man the fuck up now? Is that not like... Oh, just, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I, ghosts need to sort it out and really... That's, it's staying in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. So this one is I didn't from... mean anything by that. They just wish ghosts would just sort their act out and be more prominent because if they're really blowing it, ghosts need to really pull their trousers up. Can you say that? Is that... Put on their big boy pants? No, you can't say that. No, because polo. This is Josh from Manchester. Which UK skater has the best kickflip? Tom Penny. That's a good point, but shall we shall we try and think of someone that's... I'm current? talking about Penny in his prime. Let's talk about someone currently 20s to 30s in UK skateboarding right now. Um, um, the thing is with stuff like this is I don't really zone in that much on... Unless it's completely like... You know who actually has a real fucking good kickflip and... Well, I'm wondering because that's the question. And... The reason it's so good is because their foot placement is completely Bolts. centered. Who is it? Board. Mark Stern. Okay, from cool. From Northampton has a real good, powerful, like... Oh, his Bush feet, has got a good one. James Bush. He's got feet, a good kickflip. Yeah, their feet are completely centered. They're not like off to the yeah. side. They're, that's when you know someone's got so, someone's comfortable on a board. Their feet are completely sen- centered. And One thing that refers back to, maybe not um, uh, consciously, but Jeremy Ray in Secondhand Smoke, mm-hmm. the Plan B video. Yep. Um, he does a line in the beginning and he does the front side flips down cars about it and his feet are properly, they're like in a hill flip position if anything. They're the just, yeah. And it's good when <coughs> people catch them. Oh well, specifically when Stern catches them, <coughs> he like pops it up and it kind of comes up at an angle and he yeah. flicks it down and he catch, doesn't catch it with his back foot. It like comes up. Hey, another good one. Uh, James Gazzard's got a really good flip. Yep. Very good flip. Yeah, but Callan you know, actually put one on his story. Yeah. Gazard flipping a, a, yeah, that a big gap. gap. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, Gazard. Fucking hell, he's got a good flip. He's yeah. good, but you know what's good? People, um, not what's good. What is interesting is the people that have good kick flips are the people that have got fucking good pop. They get their board in the air. Yeah, of course. And yeah. Then, then they do the flip. And that is how you do it. Because once it's in the air, it weighs less. It's easier to manipulate. You know what I'm sick of Trick seeing? Trick tips. <laughs> you know what I'm sick of seeing? Me? No, Never. <laughs> Kids, kids that are starting skating that have a wee collie, but they're trying to do a ridiculous kickflip. Yeah, like just give up. Like learning to probably. run before you can walk. Like yeah. they can barely balance, but they're trying to go really quick and boost the tray flip. And it's like that's not. Good. Imagine learning to do a real good kickflip and a real good tray flip, and then you can't ollie. You you've not yeah, got a powerful it, ollie. It, trying to run. You're you working can walk. backwards. Doesn't make any sense. But anyway, on to the next question, well, please. Can you Toby. grab your phone with the ones we? had from yesterday and let's go through those this is greg from lincolnshire um lincolnshire is a lovely place is that where jesse's from yeah jesse thomas yeah a lot of greenery around lincolnshire. yeah very flat um lincoln lovely place mm-hmm. cathedral Ooh. visit lincolnshire can we get um visit lincolnshire to endorse to episode? sponsor can we get a day trip out of them Imagine that they put us up in a caravan oh, park live in Skegness. Brain, live brain drain from Skegness. Show from Skegness. Right, email Lincolnshire. <laughs> Fucking hell. Email Lincolnshire right now. And <laughs> Lincoln say that, at Lincolnshire.org. Dot gov. Dot uk. Dot org, and say that we want a day out in Lincolnshire, paid we could for. Do an amazing advert of us holding hands, walking through a Lincolnshire countryside field, holding cocks. Anyway, next question, Greg from Lincolnshire. Which UK skaters are you into right now? Ford can't say Avi. That's a fair point, because Avi is the best. Um, Let's try and keep this non-biased to who you film or things like that. Can I can I say a few? Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of people that I think are sick and I watch. Um, it is biased, but Ben Plum is on it. Very yeah. good boy. But he's a very good boy, Ben Plum. Um, Will Sayer. Gazard, of course, yeah. Nick Roberts, yeah, and then Rashid. it's always a blessing. I know, I know that sounds really, blo- uh, no, really it's biased. A bless- but it's always a blessing when you get Nick on a board on a good yeah. day. He's but really good. Bushy has always been sick. Yep, um, and that's all I got for you. Over to you, Ford. I just had, I literally just had someone in my head. So give me a minute to figure out who. I've been enjoying watching at the moment. Oh, we've um, got a minute timer up here. So I've been a minute, so we get so, a minute out. <laughs> I really like because they're a good crew and Dips. they're all nice. Yeah, obviously, and they're they're good dudes. It's the yard sale guys. So, um, yeah, Bear Miles oh, is Bear Miles, really yeah. fun to watch. Curtis Pearl <clears throat> is really fucking fun to watch. Even the guy that films and mainly edits them all, like Dan, like he's fucking really good at skating. But I mean, aside from that, I think. Socks is fun to watch on a board because it's super yeah, very sporadic. Creative, yeah. um, and if I'm being biased, um, 
Dead Dave is fun to watch on the board. I love seeing Dave clips. Rashid is just a, a pleasure to watch skate because you can just kind of put him in a situation and watch him go. And obviously, like you said, Will. Like watching Will Sayer on his yeah. board. I've always it, been a fan of Will, even yeah. before he wrote for Snakes. Like when I used to see him about, always yeah. proper sick. He's just good He's just good to watch on the board. And what you can do on Zip Zingers is like you'll never see anyone skate a zip zinger the same way that Will does. Yeah. And that's why <clears throat> Crooked need to just hook Will up directly, but with zip zingers. Yeah. That would be an easy sponsor, wouldn't it? Yeah, because he doesn't Fucking, go through that many of them. No, he can, he's he been on the same zip zinger now for maybe like three months since Nick at Shiner. Thank you, Nick. Nick sent Chappelle. Him some yeah. So Big up, let, Nick let's Chappelle. try and sort that out because every time I put a clip up of Will, like Canelli from Slugger or someone else will just be like, they always ask me, does he get sent crooked boards? And I'm like, no. And they're like, he should. Yeah. Because he's a good advocate for... Yeah. You don't just need to get a Zip Zinger board for a cruiser like no. everyone does. You can fucking skate them as proper boards. Same with the heated wheels. Those dudes all skate the heated wheels. Yeah. But they're right, my... Do you want to get out your phone? But they're my favourite skateboarders and so is Avi. So there you go. So this is from Anonymous. No lie, I was actually shaving my gooch while listening to the podcast. What's your views on Andy Anderson? What a fucking good... Right. I, I, I really Wait. don't think someone was shaving their gooch when they watched the last one, what's but your I might view... be wrong. What's your views on Andy Anderson? Is it annoying <clears throat> because I love creative, skate... creative skateboarding and stuff, but there's just something about him that makes me cringe so hard and it makes him it makes him watchable, in my opinion. I think he meant to say Is he meant unwatchable? unwatchable? Yeah. Um, Personally, I really like Andy Anderson. I don't think there's anything to dislike about him. If you don't like it, like I said last time, look somewhere else. I think he Let got, him get on with it. I think he got utterly shat on by the skate community because of the helmet and how Wearing he's Wearing a helmet. But he's gone to Tampa in all these competitions and he's fucking dominated them. People are actually kind of being like, wow, he is incredibly good at skateboarding. Yeah. He's pro no shoes stinking as fuck. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. That's his character. But I I'm not bet, he's I, thinking. But. I bet you in I bet you in skateboarding in general, his footwear and board sales are amazing. Oh yeah, well, isn't his board one of the best selling boards in the world? Yeah. So um, you know, people are a fan of him. So yeah, I, I, mean, I can see why people wouldn't be, because he's borderline on the edge of like. Yeah. But he's, at he's, the same time, <clears throat> if he walked in this building and he was like, "Do you want to go film some skateboarding?" I'd never turn that down. So. On to the next correspondence, please. Toby. Do it properly. On to the next correspondence, please. Toby. Uh, here's a message from Anonymous. Actually, I know who this is. Is there going to be a regular recipe feature? Well, this is from Heidi. Um, regular recipe feature? Yeah, well, going on the Ninja Kitchen thing. Ninja Kitchen UK, you, the people are asking for this shit. If you haven't sorted it out by the time this episode goes out, you're absolutely losing out because there are literally tens of people who want to know about... Tens. They want to know what latest... Uh, I actually counted our. Are. I actually counted our DMs for people asking about Ninja Air Fryer. It's a lot. It, it was something like sixty, seventy people. Ninja Kitchen Ninja UK. Kitchen. You're blowing it. Um, and then she's also sent a video here of her walking a horse, and it says, "Yeah, we don't need to." Horses are definitely big dogs. I take them for walks and everything. Thank you. Horses are fucking. They're just big dogs. They're big, friendly dogs. We need to get my dog on because he's basically a horse. Yeah. And he's well awkward as well. I imagine yeah. him just sat here like... Yeah, he just walk around and start crying. Okay, so we've got some more questions here. So Okay, so this is from Anonymous, um, Joe Hinson. <laughs> What's... Can I just... Win a caveat to this. Joe Hinson was here recently and he said that we are allowed to absolutely rinse him as much as possible. So I think he's going to regret saying that. Over to you, Ford. Go. So what's better? Get Lester or Baghead Crew? Anonymous, of course. Well, Joe... I would say, you know, me and Cal are friends. I think we're both we're both very <coughs> we're both very on the same par. We both have our certain appeals to certain audiences. Um, different strokes for different folks. So someone will say one's better, someone will say the other's better. But the one thing you got to remember about both Get Lester and Baghead is neither of us want you in our video. Oh, burn! So Shot, shots have been fired. So I guess you're going to say that they're both equally as shit. So can you? Can Who you cares? just can I just say shots have been fired and do this and can you put guns over my hands? <laughs> shots have been fired. <laughs> You're really cold today. Are you dead? That was one of the best quotes from the last episode, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is the next question for 
Toby, if you would like to read that out. Okay, this is from Anonymous. Opinions on the Route 1 drama. Wow, I, I'm not going to say anything on that. So I don't know too much about it, but I do think if they're trying to open up skate shops in a city that has a core skate store, it's obviously yeah. going to be met with backlash. You're, you're causing I don't, problems there. I don't really I know mean, too much of Route 1, but um, it is very odd that on that same week that they were going to open up where? Where were they planning Liverpool. to In Liverpool. And then you got Lost Heart there. And then Lost Heart have been the, the, the centre of the scene for fucking years. I think if Mackie came on, I'd be really interesting and we could... He's got a fucking creepy. lot of history. Yeah, there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of stories there. And I think, Mackie, if you're listening, we, we'd love to have you on. It'd be very chill. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But if you don't want to, that's fine. Anyway, I yeah, found so... it interesting with the Route 1 <coughs> drama when they did the... When the Liverpool thing started, because they did post that on their actual Route 1 page. Yeah. A week after... But they were tagging Lost Art. Yeah, like, big What's up. We've about? done everything. Like, what you've done fuck? so much. So that's basically saying... You've done a lot for the scene, but we don't think you've done enough, so we're going to intervene. I, and that is fucking I gammon. almost think that maybe they were doing that to cause shit for Well, this is, this is what I heard. So if they're opening up a shop in Liverpool, which is not going to work, because they've not opened. Yeah. They're meant to open last week. The week after that, you had all these different cities, yeah. Route 1 popping up. And I was looking at it like... Is someone just taking the piss? Well, this is it. I don't know, but... Like, is someone... Leave Lost Art alone. Yeah, Lost Art for life. Next Um, one. Over to you. I need a Lost Art jumper, so if you're watching this, Mackie, please send me a jumper. Oh, yeah, I'd love a Lost Art. Lost Art jumper, black. The college one. Yeah, size large. So this is from (laughs) Belgen Gary. Can Toby breakdance? Absolutely not. I can barely walk. Well, there you go. You heard it here first. Toby can barely walk. I'm the sort of guy who trips up getting out of bed. I wake up and walk into doors. I twist my ankle, like just walking along. Break your finger going. I break up my finger. I broke my finger walking upstairs. Or point up your bum and jumping on it, as you described last time. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you can. Okay. Read next one. Uh, is this from Anonymous? No, this is from K Doggy Dog. What do you think of all these TikTok style edits on Insta? Zoom in bollocks to slow mo shite. I don't care. From my perspective, because obviously I put out edits weekly, I can see how it is annoying because, you know, I'll put out like a standard edit, but then some kid will put out one where it's like tricks are being looped and it's slow-mo and it's zoomed in and there's a shit fucking trap song over it and there's random flat ground tricks. That what obviously... is trap music? Can you give me a little, what is it? Trap music, yeah, Fraser? What's... Is it where the vocals are like... Producer Fraser's down with the kids. And it's people going like, it's people going like, <laughs> skirt, puh, do. it's fucking shit. I can feel the Red Bull it's, kicking in again, a bit fidgety. No, but trap. <clears throat> so yeah, no, I, for some reason I thought trap was like the same as grime, where it's like gritty, like you're in London, you're going to get shanked, man, man, pop, pop, gang, gang. Basically, keep doing the edits you want to do if they're working for you, great. But trap yeah. music and drill music fucking sucks. Toby, this is from Tim Waldridge. How many friends do you have, Toby? Now, um, I don't know, but I've, Three. Three. No, but you've had more friends because you was a prominent I don't want, filmer. I don't want any more friends. Name three, your three, three friends. Two mm. of them are in this room and your girlfriend. No, no. I'll just, let's, three. Move on. Right, next one. Oh my God, that was so <laughs> depressing. I want to know who your three friends are. It's not you. That is so stinking, isn't it? You're an acquaintance. That is so stinking. But I do often say this. You've got your mates, workmates, and then acquaintances. Like, we can be in the same place, not at work, and have a good laugh. But, you know, I'd rather get paid to be in your presence. Same. <clears throat> right, next question. This is from Pop Shop. Pop Shove It Up Your Nan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, legend. Can legend, they win dude. something for that? Let's send them this sticker, which we're going to have to blur out for this. You're going to win this sticker. No, we're not blurring it out. Okay. Right, so the question here. <clears throat> why is the century fisheye an industry standard? Is an optica, 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 a faux pas? And also, why so pricey? So I'll talk a bit about this, if I may. Yeah, you go first. So when Century Precision Optics came out with the, the Mark One fisheye, the point three Mark One adapter for the VX1, the, we have to talk about it for the VX1 because the original one was... Uh, designed for the VX1, uh, so it's a bayonet specifically. fit specifically for the VX1. It's a bay- bayonet fit which only worked on the VX1, which is kind of like a light bulb. We put it on, turn it, turn it 90 degrees, and it's locked on the fish height. Do you um, think that specifically started for skateboarding, or it was just a product in their range? That I think it was just got 
became so yeah. popular. They they put it in there and then it, it, Skate Films found it and then that was, you know, it like basically shit on every single other fisheye lens that was available. Because do you know why the <coughs> the Sony BX1000 was created? No. It was to film out of helicopters. Oh, for, new, for news crews. For new, for Desert Storm. A oh, war right, okay. Desert, so news crews <laughs> could film out of a helicopter because you couldn't carry right, the right, weight gotcha. with soldiers. So they made, Sony made a handicam specifically for that coverage. Okay, so the VX1 was a groundbreaking video camera for a few reasons. And it was, you know, it was kind of like the, the industry standard for a long time. Mm-hmm. And still is for some people. So the Mark I fisheye was a bayonet fit. The quality of the glass that Century made across all of their lenses was just exceptional. It was it was the best. Still dominates. Yeah, like you you can't front on that. Century knew what they were doing, and then uh, so then the, you know as the VX1 kind of um, was superseded in some ways by the VX2, which was you know shit a camera. I thought it was dog shit. Yeah, it was a shit better camera. in low light. But... Better in low light. The microphone was shit. Blah 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 blah. Different look to it. They then released... Did they do a Bayo Fit for... It was the Mark II Bayo Fit, right? They did a Bayo Fit Mark 1.5 Intermediate. Right, okay. So the, the VX1 was... It's different size chip, 50, isn't it? Like... The VX1 was a 54mm thread and the VX2 I think it was, a was a 72. Yeah, no, 52. The, the VX2 was a 58. The VX1 was 52, I yeah. think. No, I think you're right. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Anyway... So there was also the Mark One was available as a screw mount, and a lot of people use that with the TRV nine hundred. Yeah, it was quite a rare one. Like I know Dayton and Beagle. Dayton still got <clears> one, <throat> and I really wanted it when I seen it. So the, that's the, beautiful. One of the the main characteristics of the Mark One was it didn't have the the teeth, the hood, which the Mark Two and the, the intermediates. I think the intermediate went on to have that. It had the intermediate didn't. Okay, it had a blue coating, which meant the lens flare was very recognisable. Um, and then they went on to create all the other ones. Now, it was only possibly of quite a few years after that one's been around on the market that Optica and the other the other brands started coming out with fish eyes. Um, they're okay, but they don't have the same distortion. They don't have the same effect and the no. look and the feel. <coughs> Although there's there's been a video on YouTube where someone's investigated where they've got the glass from. Yeah. And they've they've done company searches and whatnot and they're claiming that the Opteca glass it comes from the same factory as the oh, century i didn't know that century glass but if that was the case is it the mold of the glass or the metal element design that it's doesn't the, make it as distorted it's the optics isn't it so behind the front glass you've got you've other got elements the sm- there'll be multiple elements there that distort it and you know expand the field mm. of view um you get what you pay for with lenses i mean yeah. lenses are great because they hold their value um, especially in photography, most lenses you can buy, and as long as you don't fuck them up or, you know, bury them in the sand or something like that, you can sell them for the same or yeah, if not more. Exactly, than the, what you, you know, bought them for. The, 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 you get you get what you pay for with lenses. So the reason that Century Optics lens was so good and so expensive, you, you got what you pay for. Good question, though. I like that. So I've spoke to Pop Shovey Inan a bunch of times. Um, he recently just bought a HPX one seven four off me. And um, he's just bought an Opteca. Is it a faux pas? I don't think it is. No, I, think, I don't think so. I mean, I know a lot of four by three videos <laughs> that people are doing on HD and 4K cameras using Opteca lenses. Well, I mean, now after was it last episode we spoke about that new lens I had? Yep. The, now my, I've now I've used that. I'm actually quite impressed with it. Um, Mica M I E K E. So it's four and a half millimeter. It's tiny. It's like that. Yeah. I mean, it looks shit, <clears throat> but the product out of it if you shoot widescreen then crop it in four by three it looks really good yeah it's no, it distortions really good. unreal i mean that i'd compare that to a mark one it's probably wider yeah the distortion is probably wider on that i think so like just I said, having I... a lip balm break just wait a sec send an email to lip balm and <laughs> try and get a lip balm endorsement as well but seriously but speeds because but speeds are really Air... good for your lips because ninja air fries did actually messages and said that we'd received your email but it's better for us to talk through DM. So send an email right now to Lip Balm. Sounds a bit sketchy, that, doesn't it? So anyway, like I said, I've, I've spoke to... His, his name's Tom. He's a really cool guy. Um, I've spoke to him about the Century Extreme a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason it's an industry standard is because... Did you say on the last episode or did we say in private that the 
the HPX with that Century Extreme is almost <coughs> becoming what the Sony VX1000 and MK1 is because Mark, Mark 1. Because they're becoming hard to get. I think the reason the Century Extreme fisheye is an industry standard is because of the same as the Mark 1. The depth of field, yeah. the width, it's got how a it looks. Look. Yeah, like you can tell if a camera, if something's filmed and it's not on a Century Extreme. Yeah. The closest thing, like we said, is the Nikon lens yeah, on the 4K body, but there is a noticeable shake. And a lot of people are saying, <coughs> well, it doesn't shake that much if you're really steady with it. How the fuck can you be really steady with it when you're filming a line? Yeah. Like, and like I said, I've got one of those lenses and I am going to have to get used to using it and I'm going to have to figure out a way to use it. But I'm holding on to the Century Extreme for as long as I can. But I think that's why it's an industry standard is because it came in by storm every skate videographer's got it yeah i mean i remember going to radlands 1997 or 8 and uh dan wolf was there filming with the vx1 and he had that lens on i remember like he was on top the of the mark bank. one yeah and i remember going up to it and looking at the lens i was like fuck this is century optics reading it and then researching yeah. it i mean when they came out they were like they were like 800 pounds plus vat yeah now the the twenty five year anniversary ones they were like one thousand eight hundred. Yeah, like I mean, but you get what you pay for. I mean, I wish I still had my VX one Mark one set up. It was a rad setup. Yeah, but it, unfortunately, it was just sat under my bed and you know weren't using it. So, but um, I think we're going to see in the next <coughs> two years that the industry standard's going to change again. I think so. Yeah, be- it needs to because the, the manufacturer's not keeping up with it. The we, extremes we, are too heavy. Yeah. They're too expensive. They're too dangerous now to use because if you're midway through a video and someone scratches it and you fucked. can't get it fixed, you're going to have to finish the rest of that video on a different lens. There's there's going to be something... Well, there has to be something which is going to fill the gap there that you can shoot HD. It's wide, distorted. You can get in, get close, and is equally as good mm. when you take off the lens for long shot. Like the VX1 was. The only downside was it was shit in low light. So, what are you currently filming on? What are your fisheye setups? Do you have any tricks and tips? Send in your texts, voice notes, and DMs to 07-383-375-159 and let us know what you're shooting on. And also air fry recipes. Air fry recipes and lens adjustments and configurations, please. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your mum, tell your neighbours. Uh, if you want to win that package from Heathen Skateboards, who are sponsoring this episode, go ahead and do that. And where do they send the correspondence to, Fordo? Well, well, we'll upload a clip with the sponsor of the week, as we've been doing for every episode. Um, <clears throat> the same as always. All you need to do is comment why you should win it, tag as many friends as you can, and make sure you're following us. And you can walk away with a new board and a whole new wardrobe of clothing and accessories. So don't miss out. The board shapes are incredible. They're actually custom made, aren't they? They're custom made. They're called the Slim Kowski. You're yeah. not going to get that board shape anywhere else. So if you enjoy skating that shape and you already have one and you want a chance at winning another one, fucking enter the competition. And if you don't win, Roller Snakes have a f- small small handful left, so don't miss out. Yeah, and all the shops that uh, get the stock through OG distribution as well. Hit those yeah. up. So we did a little giveaway on Instagram direct as well as the regular episode giveaways and we had a crooked uh was it a zip zogger, zip zinger, zip zanger? It was a zig zagger. Zig zagger board to give away courtesy of Nick Chappelle, China Distribution. Big ups those guys, thank you, Crooked. So we're gonna announce the winner of that now because we reached our target of how many eight hundred. Sounds a bit shit that, doesn't it? No, but you know, we've just started, it's early days. I know that our our Spotify is getting millions and millions of followers. Yeah, it's crazy. If you're not listening or subscribing to us on Spotify, then go ahead and do that because I think they put a limit on it and soon we will hit that limit and there'll be no more subscribers or uh, followers or listeners yep. will be allowed on Spotify. So, so get now. on it as quick Please. as you can. Please. So we we got <clears throat> over 110 comments here. All you needed to do was follow us, tag two of your friends or more, it's completely up to you, and leave a comment as to why you win it. So until we figure out a better way to do these giveaways, the easiest thing that we can do is simply swipe through at a random speed like this and land on a comment. And the winner of the Crooked Board giveaway and on the Instagram winner is... Of the Crooked Board is... Let's have a look. It is C-U-N-T. He tagged too many hobbies and bat salad. 
C U N T is James Cheek from Peterborough. You've won yourself a crooked zig. It's not a zigzag. It's a zip. Z- it's a fucking. Let You've won yourself a crooked board. Well done. I'm going to pin your comment right now, and I'm going to DM you saying that you've it's won a zip the board. Zagger. It's a zip zagger. I'm going to comment, zagger. let you know that you've won the board. And I do believe, i seen on his story, that he's coming to the Volterol Dadlands Open. All right, message him so now. So he can pick it up. Yeah, message him now. So congratulations, James Cheek. You've won yourself a zip zinger, zig zagger, zig zagger, whatever the fuck it is. And let's wrap this episode up. Yep, let's Thank you for your correspondence. Remember to keep that up. Next episode is the final one of season one, episode six. So yep. there might be something quite amusing to uh, tune in for there. Who yep. knows? Maybe not. Maybe it'll just be. Maybe it'll usual. just be the same old bullshit. It might be the usual it? riveting bullshit. Yeah, it might be. So send your DMs, text messages, voice notes, or simply when we upload on Instagram for questions, just reply. Yeah, just Remember. Leave anonymous if you don't want us to read your name out, unless you're Joe Hinson, to 07383 375 159. We look forward to hearing all of your thoughts and opinions. Please send your prayers. So I actually took a look at the um, at the board for events that we got going on. Yeah. And so far we've got an event every or month. two every month. An event or two every fucking month for free where you can win stuff and meet the love of your life. Don't fucking miss out. Don't be a kook. Don't delay. Get laid today. You can't end on saying get laid today. No, but when, I'm not ending it on get laid today. It was just a funny, like, little snappy infomercial. So I'm going to leave About this getting one. laid. I'm going to leave Toby to wrap this one up. So, yep, listen to what this man has to say right here. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you all very soon. Smell you later. Smell me now. That's a goodbye from Toby. Let's go. And a goodbye from oh, me. My Thank legs you for are so stiff. Oh. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on the we'll see you on the next episode. Ding 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 Roll the theme tune.